A great activity to do in Kyoto is to visit craft studios. Sightseeing is not the only attraction in Kyoto. Kyoto has many crafts textiles, dyeing, pottery, woodworking, and more. Some of them offer tours and hands on workshops. The reason why there are so many craft studios in Kyoto is related to the fact that Kyoto was the capital city throughout its long history. Although the current imperial palace is located in the capital city of Tokyo, emperors resided in Kyoto from 794 to 1868. This naturally attracted skilled craftsmen from all over the country to make costumes and furnishings for the emperors and their families. Even today, Kyoto remains a creative city, home to a wide variety of crafts and artisans engaged in those fields. What is it like to actually go to a craft studio? What can you do? I have a cousin who works at the dye house in Kyoto, so I will take you there in this video. The dye house also happens to be where my design studio and gallery are located, so I'll show you those as well. Please watch this video as if you are traveling in Kyoto. Craft studios are located in neighborhoods like this, where the locals live and not many tourists come. This is a dyeing factory that makes Noren curtains, banners, etc. It has a history of more than 100 years. This is Rihei, the owner of this factory. Patterns and letters are dyed onto white fabric using a technique called resist dyeing. First, rice paste is applied to the areas that shouldn't be dyed using a stencil. And then the craftsman dyes the entire cross with a brush. After steaming and washing, the cross is dyed as shown here. This is one of the largest works they made in the past at this factory. It is called maku, like a curtain that hangs in front of a temple in Kyoto. This type of dyeing, in which some mark or letter is dyed and hung mainly outdoors, is called shirushizome, which serves as a graphic design within the city. The good thing about visiting a craft studio is that you can interact with the locals. Rihei is my cousin, and he lets me use his big dyeing factory. So, by coming to this factory, you can also see my studio. I dye patterns inspired by the Kyoto landscape and make tops here. I also upcycle scraps from the factory to make artwork. I manage a gallery that displays the artworks made at this factory. If you'd like to come here, please DM me through my Instagram in the description section of this video. Roll up your sleeves, it's time to have some fun! Hands-on workshop time! Two types of workshops are available at this factory. One is Rihei's fish workshop. Rihei has always died for his customers, so there was no need for him to come up with his own dyeing patterns. In hosting this workshop, he decided to design his favorite fish and ask everybody to dye it in their favorite color. Dye your own fish and let them swim in your home. The resist dye method is used, so the white part of the fabric will remain clean and beautiful. Want a chic design or playful design? It's all up to you! 
The other is an upcycled art workshop I am hosting. This workshop is for painters. All of these materials are made from scraps from Rihei's factory. We will use fabric scraps as painting materials along with acrylic paints to create these art pieces. Painters may find it difficult to bring paints with them on their travels, but this studio has all the supplies you need. Get your hands dirty and enjoy painting as much as you like. Some canvases are small enough to fit in your suitcase, others are large. International shipping is also available if you wish. Please choose the size you like. Those who like to sew can make cushion covers. Rihei's Dye House is of course my top recommendation, but you can go to various other field craft studios in Kyoto for tours and hands-on experience. Online, the recommended site for finding a workshop or booking a visit before coming to Japan is called Kyoto Artisan Concierge. You can look it up in English. In these summary sites, the visits are organized and very smooth. I highly recommend this site for beginners. However, if you are very serious, a full day tour with a guide is recommended. For example, if you are really seriously into textiles and want to visit textile studios in Kyoto, it is easier to ask an English-speaking guide to help you. They can help you find studios to visit and plan an itinerary that will allow you to visit the places efficiently in a day. And you will have the opportunity to meet artisans who are not listed in the summary websites and are unknown to the most foreigners but who have the greatest skills. I'm not a guide but I have several friends who are great so I can introduce you to them. I can tell you clearly, to visit several craft studios in one day, it's definitely better to hire a guide. Craft studios are really hard to find because they are often family owned and located in residential areas. And of course, an English speaking guide can help you communicate with the artisans. And if you are extra serious, why not consider a tour that lasts a week or more and includes plenty of visits to craft studios? If you are an American, there are some tours I recommend, such as one organized by an American company that visits many textile studios in Kyoto. Please check the link in the description section here as well. Say sayonara to the Kyoto trip obsessed with conquering the list of places to go and dive into an experience that will stir your creativity. I want to make the comment section of this channel, where everyone can share their opinions. What did you think of this video? Your experience in Kyoto? Please share with us! Don't forget to tell your friends about this channel! Have a nice trip!